You're listening to That Gets My Goat. I'm very, very sorry. Hi, everybody. Welcome to That Gets My Goat. It's the new style. I don't know that I like the new style. Do they? Do people hear that racket? I think they probably can. <laughs> so we're uh, in a junkyard with, next to one of those car crushing machines. <laughs> uh, actually, we just went out for pizza, but they happen to also serve crushed cars. Yeah, they're uh, they're having a fight. I think they're taking the pans that the pizzas go under, and they're hitting each other over ah. the head with them back there. But you know how it turns out when you have like a pillow fight, you half the time are just blocking one pillow with the other pillow. I think so they're just banging the pans together. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on. Uh, so if you hear banging, it's uh, pizza pan wars going on. Um, yeah, we're just hanging out waiting for the buffet to begin. And we figured why not take advantage of the time and record? Why not? I mean, you have a flat tire and you have to be at work soon, but That's why right. not? <clears throat> That's right. So this will be another one of those episodes with no editing where it has lots of ums in it? Sure. It works racial for me. Racial slurs? Yeah, all the racial slurs okay. will stay in, all the ums, um, that good stuff that people uh, didn't know about us. <laughs> So we're talking uh, a subject that's near and dear to everyone's heart today. What is that subject, Rich Outfield? Oh, yeah, I don't know that it's near and dear to everyone's heart. No, the, it is. One of our listeners, Chris White, uh, listened to our episode about oh, the turtles, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which we like recorded turtles. a long time ago. I like turtles, too. <laughs> and uh, we recorded it a long time ago, and it happened to come out right after the Man of Steel episode where a lot of the complaints I make about Man of Steel are the same complaints I make about Michael Bay's filmmaking. And so we had two in a row that were like that, but apparently we mentioned Boba Fett at some point in the conversation. Boba Fett? Where? Boba Fett. And he, uh, like, like he was a positive example of a character. I, I mean, I, haven't, I don't remember the context of the Boba Fett thing. <laughs> Me neither. But he, again, uh, this Chris White guy said, I'm not from your... Generation, I, I, you know, your world is strange. Yes, I'm just a caveman. (laughs) Your world, and he says, you know, but I've never understand your, I've never understood your generation's love for or obsession with the Boba Fett character. He says, why? Where did that come from? What did he do to make y'all love him so much? And I started to think about it, and I didn't have an adequate answer. I said, that's going to be our next episode. We're going to talk about the the mystery that is Boba Fett. Okay, why don't you give us a quick history of Boba Fett. Tell us who he is, where he comes from, and okay. the scurrilous, spur, scurrilous or spurrilous? What's the word? Spurious. Spurious, there we go. The spurious uh, things that George Lucas did with him in the last 15 years. Okay, essentially Boba Fett was created in between Star Wars and The Empire Strikes Back, and... I'm not sure if Lucas knew what he wanted to do with him. He just had Ralph McQuarrie and Joe Johnston design this character that would be in the second film. Uh, They ended up putting him in the Star Wars Holiday Special first. Uh, And then he came out in Empire Strikes Back and he was the the bounty hunter, the one that Vader addresses specifically. He's the bounty hunter who tracks the Millennium Falcon and ends up capturing Han Solo in Carbonite and taking him back to Jabba the Hutt. And then in Return of the Jedi... He's the one that dies an ignominious death. <laughs> Basically, just a, he dies he, from a pratfall failure. By accident, and yeah. Somebody hits him in the back and sets off his jetpack, and he hits into the side of the ship, right? And then falls into the pit? That's right, and that's it. I mean, in the expanded universe, they bring him back, and in the prequels, they try and give a backstory, a tragic backstory to the child, Boba Fett, and all that, but... I don't think anybody cares about that, and I don't think anybody loves Boba Fett from the Holiday Special. Now, in the Holiday it's, Special, he was an animated character, right? I've he, never he seen was, this yes. Holiday they're, 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 The Holiday Luckily. Special was a very low-budget cash-in uh, done for television that had everybody in it. I mean, it had uh, Anthony Daniels and Kenny Baker and Mark Hamill and Harrison Ford and Carrie Fisher and Dick 
James Earl Jones did the voice of Vader. I mean, it was that many integral parts of Star Wars came back to do this holiday special, but it's awful <laughs> and really, really badly done. They were um, singing songs and crap. Yeah, it was a variety show <laughs> kind of thing. And, yeah, and they had, like, Diane Carroll do a song, and they have uh, Jefferson Starship do a song. Ooh, Jefferson Starship, nice. And, they, and B. Arthur does a song. <laughs> Um, which I think is the the best song in there. And Carrie Fisher sings a song. It, it's it's terrible. But in the middle of the show, they have a cartoon, and it was done by uh, Nelvana Animation, the guys that later would go on to do you know, Masters of the Universe. Um, that has the ones that have the polar bear and the star. Isn't that their logo? I don't remember. It sounds vaguely familiar for some reason. But this cartoon introduced Boba Fett. Boba Fett. Where? <laughs> in the cartoon. And you don't want to do that every time you say his name, right. okay? So just and get it, ready uh, for it. It introduces him as like a, a potential new ally to the Rebel Alliance, and then it's revealed that he works for Darth Vader. And uh, that's it. I mean, the cartoon is has such awful animation. I mean, it's not as bad as that new Teen Titans cartoon, <laughs> but it's about the level of, like, Adventure Time. Except for that, you know, it's Star Wars, so it should look really good. It's just, it's all grotesque. And, and anyway, but it's worth seeing the the, the cartoon because it's, you know, eight or nine minutes. That's interesting because He-Man was really yeah, impressive it, animation, I thought. When I was a kid, I was amazed that they, the characters blinked. I was just like, what? Something's, it was that, uh, what do they call the it? Uncanny the Valley. Uncanny Valley. Yeah, that's it. Where all of a sudden my cartoons were blinking and I was just like, oh my gosh. It's too realistic. Ah, <laughs> run! <laughs> They're possessed. Um. Well, I mean, I, I, I don't particularly remember He-Man as being a quality show, but it was the first show I remember being actually attracted to an animated character. The Tila was uh. drawn to look like a really good-looking person, right? Um, and it so they're just like Wilma, where she, you know, yeah. And that's hard. It really is hard to pull that off. In animation, I mean, it's it's easy to make a monster. It's easy to make you know a square jawed superhero kind of thing. But to make an attractive female, it it requires a little bit more investment. And I guess just with the Star Wars holiday special, like I said, it was a cheap cash in, uh, and the animation was equally cheap. But uh, the, the worst thing to me about watching the holiday special is just that there was so much potential for for a new story in the Star Wars universe. You could have done it with the no money that they spent on it just by having a better script. Right. But, that you know, they, they Lucas had very little to do with it. He's disowned the project. Everybody that worked on it said, you know, we knew what we were doing was some, you know, kiddie, cheap thing, and, and we're sorry that we did it, and please <laughs> yeah. forgive us. It's one of those things that almost completely disappeared, really. I had no idea that it even existed until I was an adult. And uh, only then did I start hearing rumors of, what, a holiday special? What? And I, it's funny, I remember uh, that Weird Al Yankovic video uh, for his song where he did with White, White and Nerdy, Nerdy, where he's like in the alleyway, you know, doing what looks like a drug deal, and then he gives the guy money, and the guy gives him the holiday special on VHS, and he's like, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I saw a thing once where they were talking about, and I want to say it was in Entertainment Weekly, but they were talking about uh, Boba Fett and Darth Maul and kind of comparing them as characters that people had an unexplainable fascination with. And they had like a graph, right? Or a chart or whatever. And it had, you know, Boba Fett, Darth Maul. And it's like, where did they first appear? And, uh, you know, Darth Maul says, you know, Phantom Menace. And then Boba Fett, it says... Uh, holiday special. Seriously. <laughs> and then it goes down the line and it said, like, you know, how many um, lines they had. And each of them had about four. I think one of them had four, one of them had three or something like that. I can't remember which is which, though. And it kind of went down the line about, you know, the, whether they uh, did what they did that was special or anything. Um, I think a lot, and this is my take on it. A lot of what makes Boba Fett cool and why people think he's neat, or A, he, he was wily enough to capture Han, 
despite the entire empire chasing the Millennium Falcon for the majority of, of uh, uh, the Empire Strikes Back, he's the one guy that's able to, you know, figure out what they've done and float off with the garbage or whatever it was <laughs> in, the, in the same way. Um, <clears throat> but, so obviously he's kind of a smart dude, although, yeah, he does die the ignominious death. Um, but even then, he's considered dangerous enough, you know, to go, Boba Fett, where? Um, I don't know, I, um, I did, would Han even know his name? I mean, how long did... <clears throat> well, see, that's the weird thing, is he was created in 78, the Boba Fett character, but Darth Vader just says bounty hunter. You know what I mean? They never name him in Empire Strikes Back. They called it, they named him in uh, the cartoon of it. Yeah, our friend Boba. <laughs> um, but it, anyhow, it, it finish what you were saying. Uh, um, is The wiliness is part of it? Yeah, I think that's part of it. That and then just basically he's cool looking. You know what I mean? He's got this really cool suit. He's got a little cape. He's got a jet pack. He's got all, I mean, you sent me this thing the other day, which was, I thought, really interesting. It was basically a look back at the creation of Boba Fett and they had this archival video that apparently they dug up out of somebody's uh, basement or something. It must have been like on a VHS tape. I don't know. I heard at one point they said, this is a black and white tape we're using here because it was black and white footage of, who was the guy? Ben Burt. Oh, it was Ben Burt that was there talking? Okay. Which is weird because he's the sound designer. Yeah. So he shouldn't have had anything to do with Boba Fett, but... Yeah, Ben Burt is standing there, and there's another dude that's inside the Boba Fett suit. And uh, they're basically talking about Boba Fett. They're like, here he is. And they've got a lot of the stuff all designed and ready. He has a speaker in his chest so that his he can speak, and it sounds all, you know, radio-like, like Stormtrooper sound and, and that kind of stuff. He's no good to me dead. And, he's sta- and, and this is early in the Boba Fett suit creation because... He is white still, like a stormtrooper. He looks like a stormtrooper. He actually looks a lot like a clone trooper, you know, in the in the later movies, because his his the mask on his face mask kind of has that similar look to it. I thought when I first saw it. Of course, give yourself enough time and you realize, oh, it's Boba Fett suit. Uh, but because it's white, it's weird. But they went through and they were explaining, like, oh yeah, he shoots darts out of this hole and he's got this out of here. And they even had a thing on his suit where he pushed a button and a bunch of smoke blew out the back of the jet pack and then they were joking and saying oh yeah he's really struggling against the lift so that he doesn't <laughs> fly away here <laughs> but uh, i thought it was really interesting to see that and they mentioned oh yeah we're right now he's just white but we're thinking giving him you know a bunch of different colors on the suit and stuff like that which what they wound up doing and he, he's kind of strange i mean it's odd that people would like a teal character. I mean, I don't know what color you call that. Steel gray or steel blue. Whatever color it is that he is. He's like, body armor is like aqua. <laughs> it's just like an unusual set it's of strange colors. strange that they chose that, yeah. And it's strange that people would latch on to a character that's colored like that. You know what I mean? You would think, you know, those are kind of wussy colors. I want the tough guy that's all black, like Darth Vader. But yeah, they were saying just that what they wanted was somebody that could make public appearances go around and get people excited about a new Star Wars movie so they came up with this character that you know people didn't know yet and they're like oh you know then they could I guess have a commercial on the radio come to the zoo and meet the new Star Wars character in the upcoming movie Boba Fett will be appearing or whatever it's 2013 and I had never heard this before I've never met anybody who said we went and saw Boba Fett at the opening of yeah, Alien or whatever it happened to be. That, that person something. would be like 60 years old, probably. That's probably why you've never met him. You don't run in the same circles. Well, it, 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 Star Wars fans tend to... Well, before something happened to separate us into two groups, <laughs> we tended to always band together. And, you know, you'd find somebody. And even if they were 30 years older than you, it's like, oh, I, I found a new brother. But I hadn't seen that. Boba Fett thing. It yeah, was really, it was from seventy eight, like I said, and somebody had uploaded it in two thousand eleven, and I had never heard of it until this week. But I was riveted. I thought the white Boba Fett was the coolest thing <laughs> ever. I, I just stared at it with my mouth agape. <laughs> um, and again, this isn't even 
you know, footage from a movie or anything like that. So it's totally divorced from his wiliness or from his gravelly voice or from, you know, his... I mean, because he never sets off the flamethrower or f- flies around or anything like that in Empire Strikes Back. Right. He, he does very... He shoots at Luke and misses. That's it. So for me, it has to be the look of this armor. Because I, I was just like, oh my gosh, I, I, why don't they have a statue of white Boba Fett that I can buy after watching that? <laughs> and, they may well make one. You know, just give them time. It just, yeah, I, was, I, I asked my cousin, if I bought a, a regular Boba Fett statue, could you paint it white for me? <laughs> just from that. How would it be? Well, it was white, but like the understuff was like grayish, it looked like, maybe? There were different colors of, of, of white, although it's kind of hard to know because it was a black and white... It was a black and white film yeah, we were watching, and so there well could have been, been some orange. colors in there, too. <laughs> For all you know, it could have been orange, like a really bright construction worker orange. And the, the Darth Maul comparison is good, because he was the breakout character in Phantom Menace. He was the character they, they still, last year when they re-released it, put on all the merchandising. But the difference is Darth Maul actually does something. Right. He is actually formidable takes two Jedis to to kill him and one of the Jedis dies trying it's funny you were talking about how they brought Boba Fett back in the expanded universe they did, apparently they did the same thing with Darth Maul uh, in the cartoon <laughs> gave him like robot legs or some BS like that stupidest thing ever um, I, when I saw that I was like oh it's a prequel thing come back and you find out where he came from no no he's back post cut from the freaking waist down somehow all his uh, inner workings were saved he was cauterized and they were able to ridiculous <laughs> I think yeah it's definitely the look though like I I, w- I always talk to you about G.I. Joe and we talk about you know our favorite characters in G.I. Joe none of them were the G.I. Joes basically except Snake Eyes Snake Eyes Snake Eyes we love and then we love Storm Shadow we love Cobra Commander we love Destro we love Firefly, you love the Cobra Troopers, you love the because bat. you love the bats, yeah, you love the Vipers, the Crimson Guards, all the guys that have the cool costumes. They all had these cool suits with masks and helmets and and they just looked neat. And then yeah, I mean Duke was just a dude with a, like a army uniform on. So nobody really latched on much to you know, like Gung Ho who's just a marine looking guy with a tattoo on his chest or shipwreck shipwreck a bird who was just a dude in a sailor suit it's just like uh, you know Donald Duck doesn't do it for me either you know I don't know why you think it's going to change because you made him into a man instead of a duck but part of the fun of all of those different cobra vipers uh, or whatever you would call the cobra troopers troopers was that somebody sat down and came up with neat armors and yeah. almost fantasy sci-fi looking suits, you know, right. so like, uh, that you would find, you, you wouldn't be surprised to find these in a Star Wars movie or in right, a totally. uh, Flash Gordon movie or some, something that took place in the future. And all these, all the Cobra characters, except for Baroness that I can think of, had their faces covered. Uh-huh. And there was a mystery there, a mystique of... of Wow, you know, what does Cobra Commander look like? Why does he wear that? And they would even have like that episode or uh, comic books. Uh, there was one I know that was called Unmaskings, and it shows like the the cover of it is like Snake Eyes mask, Cobra Commander's hood, and uh, I want to say maybe Destro's, Destro's mask thing. all sitting there on the ground, you know, not on their faces, and it's like, oh, we finally get to see what they look. Oh my goodness. One of those things that they kind of blew in the movie because they show Cobra Commander without his helmet on, I think. And Definitely in the first movie. Yeah, well, in the second movie, he's post-face melted or whatever, and they show you a look of him all hideous. And then he puts his helmet on. It's just like, no, you got to... You got to keep that a mystery. You never want to show what he looks like because that's half the draw for kids. Well, I remember Irvin Kirshner, to go back to Empire Strikes Back, said that if he had been brought back to direct Return of the Jedi, he never would have revealed Vader without the mask on. Because he said that everybody in their, has built up in their mind what he must look like. And you'll only be disappointed when you see it. And that's definitely the case with Doctor Doom or Cobra Commander or Snake Eyes. Because Snake Eyes was in, injured in some way. 
during Vietnam, I right. remember. And he, so he wore this mask, not because it was cool, but because he, he was a good guy and he didn't want to upset people with it, what he looked like. I think the same injury is why he doesn't speak as well. And so you imagine what it must be like and what you imagine is almost always more amazing or more horrible or more attractive or more whatever it's supposed to be than what it really is. I mean, it's, it's, it's just a sad part of life, uh, you know, when you try and keep a monster secret and then, and then when people actually see it, they're almost always disappointed. Same with, uh, like, uh, Jason Voorhees or whatever, where he'd always wear the mask. When you finally saw it without the mask, you'd be like, oh, dang, I expected, you know, fill in the blank kind of thing uh, it's it's just something that you deal with I guess in all that stuff but of course poor Kirshner wasn't coming back despite making the best of the Star Wars movies um, so it would have been interesting to see how he would have tackled that but, but they weren't trying to shock with Vader right the revelation of Vader without the mask on is Supposed he's a just a man. Yeah, a regular guy. It's like, shoot, you know, we've been terrified of this guy, or, or I, I, I would assume people were afraid of Vader. Uh, Bill Murray was in that Saturday Night Live sketch. And then you see he's just a, he's yeah, he's a sad old man, or middle-aged man. He's a sad man who's our age. Um, <laughs> but anyhow. But yeah, maybe that's one of the things that keeps Boba Fett cool, is that he was never unmasked. Well, yeah, we never really Although, found... When it comes down to it, I guess he kind of was. Ah, uh, with the kid. Because we've seen the kid, and we've seen the Django Fett, his father, who is now every stormtrooper there is, and uh, that sort of unmasked him in a way. It's 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 kind of similar to the whole midi-chlorian thing, you know, taking all the fun out of it. You know, let's just explain it away so that it, there's nothing neat and mysterious and exciting about it anymore. Yeah, and that's something we've talked about before. When you have a mystery that goes on for a long time, there's always going to be somebody that doesn't like the way that you resolve the mystery. And the Force could mean whatever you wanted it to mean. I I think that's one of the reasons so many people, whether they were religious or not, grabbed onto the Force as something like, wow, I could get behind that. Because it's kind of like Buddhism, which I already believe, or it's kind of like Christianity, which I already believe, or it's kind of like devil worship, which my whole family believes. And, and, and it, you know, but once they define it and say, you know, it's actually this, then suddenly it's like, oh, okay, well, I, I don't, I don't, I that's, believe. That's in, not my thing. Yeah. I believe in Christianity. I believe in Buddhism. So it's nothing like it. It's, yeah. That was, a, that was a mistake. I, I always felt that the midi chlorians was one of the biggest punches to the gut in the prequels. And you could have uh, definitely still conveyed the exact same information yeah, totally with no without. I mean you just all of them oh, Qui-Gon in one sentence could have said I've never felt a presence of the force this way not right. even with Master Yoda yeah he could just sit in front of him close his eyes like hold his hand up and be like wow I can really feel the force from you you're, you're amazing and Lucas came up with the midichlorian thing way back during the, the original series I mean sorry the original uh, movies but he never spelled it out and never said anything. And that was a, 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 a happy accident, you know, yeah. or, or it was brilliant. I don't know. It's hard to say. And the thing with Boba Fett is because he's in there so sparsely, is that a good way to describe sure. it? Everything that he does, except for, ah, and getting killed, does is he do cool. The, the whatchamacallit scream? The, 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 the Wilhelm scream? Yeah, the Wilhelm. No, that's him? the very first guy that Luke knocks into the... Man, every now and then I just... It seems like the Wilhelm really needs to be retired. I, I think some people love it. and they, I they love it, but... I think it's great, but it's a ridiculous scream. And so every time you hear it... It draws attention Yeah, to it. it draws attention to itself. It takes you out of it. It unsuspends your disbelief. And I, I, I want to say, was, was it Superman? There was some movie just very recently that I saw that had another one. It had one of those again. And I was just like, ah. Oh. I want to say it really... It must have been Superman. I think my kids were sitting next to me, and they're like, oh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> "Really? Huh? Was, right. it, was it one of the thousands of poor humans that got killed in Metropolis? Perhaps, or maybe one of. I think it actually was one of the Kryptonians that was killed in the very early scenes of the death of Krypton stuff. Um, so there's Boba Fett. Well, okay, yeah. The thing I was going to say was he up? does so little. That every moment that he's there, all he has to do is just look or stand, 
menacingly. Or there's that moment in Jedi when Princess Leia has the thermal detonator and Boba Fett pulls out his gun while everybody else covers themselves and hides. And that's just a really neat visual of oh, who this guy is and how he's different from everybody else. But even all that stuff aside, it's the costume. The yeah. costume is so... I think second only to Vader, it's the best designed costume in the whole trilogy. And uh, I don't think that it matters who was in the suit. No. It doesn't... It, it didn't require any acting that I could think of. It, it was just the way that it looked. And Jeremy Bullock, who played Boba Fett in the, those two movies, you know, it's become somewhat famous for it and he signs autographs on that and good for him but it really doesn't matter who was in there that thing I mean it just looked great and there are several designs that are just wonderful in those that Star Wars trilogy yeah but uh, I, I think Vader and Boba Fett are like the two most iconic I, the Stormtroopers are really really neat too but they did so many variations on the Stormtroopers that it almost diluted it is right. that fair to say sure um, I mean, I love, like, this the Snow Trooper, and I love the Sand Trooper, and I love the Biker Scout and all that stuff, but it's just... The only other one that I can think of that's super awesome was the Empire, the Imperial Guard. Oh, yeah! The, the Royal Imperial Guards. Those were really cool. And they do less than Boba Fett. Yeah, they, they do just stand nothing. There. And, and there was that scene... they walk out at one time. <laughs> there was that deleted scene where they actually do something, but nobody's seen that deleted scene, really. I mean, I guess if you have the Blu-rays, you have seen it, but... Uh, you know, it's just such a shame that Lucas always has to play with the trilogy uh, in ways that I don't agree with, like putting Boba Fett into Star Wars for like a glorified cameo where he looks at the camera. Oh, geez. That always bothered me because it's just, it's, I, p- people use the word fan service and I never really understood what it means, but it's always like doing something sleazy. That it'll get the fans excited, like, ooh, uh, let's show Carol Marcus in her underwear on Star Trek Into Darkness. I guess I'm the only person who appreciated that. <laughs> but it's still, it's, yeah, it's, it's when you do something uh, somewhat underhanded or, you know, just because you know the audience, the, the fans will go, ooh, and that's what they did with Boba Fett. But I'd love to just see Lucas put in all those deleted scenes, spend a couple million dollars to clean them up and and uh, and just have extended versions of those movies the way that Peter Jackson did the the Lord of the Rings thing just as an option and I know that that's not talking about Boba Fett I don't think there's any Boba Fett footage that got cut out <laughs> I, he had a couple of lines in Return of the Jedi that got lost get away from me you blind fool or something like that that sounds like a George Lucas line so yeah, it just and, oh they added in the special edition that he like flirts with a, a, a girl. Yes. Flirting with a dancing girl or something. But none of that helped Boba Fett. It's just one of those where the more in the shadows he is and the less the less uh, that's why it's so difficult to put my finger on why. Why do we love him so much? Why is he such an iconic character for my generation? And to 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 try and explain to Chris White it's it's really difficult to do. Why do I love that Journey song? Well, I guess you can point to, you know, the lyrics being poignant or, the, or just, oh, how great the chorus is or whatever. But mostly it's where I was when I heard that Journey song, what it reminds me of, the many, many girls you made out with while listening to that Journey song. And then you, later you told me in, in lovely detail about... That's why I love that journey. It was almost like you made out with them after that. It was, yeah. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) All right. Uh, So, yeah, Boba Fett we like because he's cool looking. And, yeah, if you disagree, if there's another reason that I've forgotten, let us know. Put it in the comments, and and I'll be like, oh, yeah, I forgot that. That... I, I can't think of what it could have been. <laughs> but yeah, we, we go to the forum and discuss it because we we always uh, respond to those kind of things. Uh, all right, well, we're going to get some pizza, so I'm going to uh, shut this down. Thanks for listening, everybody. I'm Big Anklevich. Hey, he's no good to me, Dad. <laughs> Boba Fett. Where? We will. Yeah. <laughs> you keep doing it. 
That Gets My Go is produced under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License. As if anyone would want to copy this crap.